Thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, I guess um, the reason I picked this to talk about, you know, um, when David said, would you like to you know, do something like this, it, it was one of the things for me that, uh, you know, I, I looked at paintings and I couldn't work out how, how they got this distant look. I started off painting portraits with a guy, Dave Thomas, in Campbelltown, maybe 20 odd years ago now, and uh, I really wanted to do um, uh, landscape. And one day he came along with a book, and it was a book by uh, John Wilson, which I'm sure you probably, if you like landscape, you've probably heard of. And uh, I thought, well, that's what I want to do. I want to make them look like that. And uh, basically, that, I, I went and took lessons with him. And uh, he's the one that sort of put me on the track as far as this, this aerial perspective thing goes. What I've done, I've, um, I've sort of typed out a few notes, but I'm not really good at working from notes. But I'll glance at this every now and then, just to remind me where I am. Um, you, there's things like, they, talk, they call it aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective. And there's two perspectives, or maybe more that I don't know of, but the two main ones are you know, line perspective, where you've got buildings or railway lines disappearing this aerial perspective, it's um, about the effect of um, light on distance. So you can have, for instance, the Blue Mountains there. You can have, if these trees here are the same as those trees there, the same as those trees there, the same as the blue effect there, you know, where it's in shadow, well, they're all the same colour. But as, as they, things go further away, you're looking through um, particles of dust and moisture. And so what happens is, and the moisture, what, what happens is there's a technical side to this, which I really don't care about. I, I, do, I just paint from the gut, if you like. So I'm not really into the technical side of things per se, but I mean, it's nice to know. Uh, and what happens is light hits these particles of moisture and um, it scatters and apparently the blue is the strongest and it overrides all the others. So what happens is, the, f the first thing to drop out is the yellow and then the red. So eventually you're left with just a blue, very blue in the distance. If you, if the, you know, the ones that are closer, for instance, let's say this type of thing, they take on a red-blue look. So the red's still in there. If, if, you, if it was a very clear day and not so stormy, you know, like, like that one there, the, uh, I don't know if you can see that one, but uh, I'll just hold it up. You can see that um, it's a redder blue there, and as it gets right into the distance, it's almost a, just a blue. And that, that's the effect of the, you know, of the thing they're calling this aerial perspective. Um, the, uh, the, that's the scientific take on it. But as I say, I just sort of basically like to sort of just paint it as I see it. Um, the latest thing I've painted is this thing here. It's, it's the same thing. The things I've brought along today really are um, you know, things that I'm using the area of perspective, that I think are using the area of perspective thing. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that photo, but can you see how dark the blues are on the photo? Now, I do paint from photos, and you know, people say, oh, we can't paint from photos. I paint from photos. If I hadn't painted from photos, I would never have painted, because I used to work all week, and the only time I could paint was at night. You know, so, but I have had people say, oh, you'll never learn to paint if you paint from photos. I do like to paint outside as well. It, it is different. It, it's special. But I like this as well. And if I can't paint outside, then I'm going to paint inside. And I was telling people earlier on that this photo, I, where I paint at home, I've got all these photos lying around. And, uh, you know, certain ones keep migrating to the top of the pile. And this was one of them. It's, um, it's taken in Milford Sound. And uh, this is Lady Bowen Falls. One of my daughters worked there for a while, so pretty lucky I was able to go and stay there a bit. But uh, I've done this in acrylic. And um, when I paint in acrylic, I paint just as if I was painting in oils. I, you know, like if I'm, I was an oil painter first, 
And so I learnt in oils, and in oils you have to paint dark to light, thin to thick. And it's a technical reason, because if you put, um, if you put uh, dark paint on top of light paint, it cracks. So you've got to get your darks down first. With acrylics it doesn't matter. You can paint it any which way. And the only thing is if I, let's say I'm painting in oils, uh, acrylics today, if I do an oil tomorrow, I don't want to sort of lose my thing. So I paint in acrylics as if I'm painting in oils. And um, uh, I go, so I go dark to light. The painting I'm going to, I'm going to do a demonstration today when, when, I, uh, when I go to these things myself, it's always great to see what people do, and it's always terrific when they explain to you how they did it. But it's so much better if you see it. So I'm going to take a risk and uh, try and do it. The thing I'm going to try and do is this. And it's um, up near Wombian Caves. This, this is the painting. I've only got an oil painting of it, a little oil sketch that I did, right? So there it is, and um, you can see this is how I, I've done it. And to, with the aerial perspective, you can see I've started off with my darkest darks, and these are the closest things to me, right? So they're dark. These trees, as they go away, they're she oaks on the side of the river. And um, so the further they go away, they get lighter and bluer. And you can see these, these mountains. This one here is quite close. This one, I hope it looks a little bit lighter and bluer. Lighter and bluer. So as they go away. If I turn it upside down, it's sometimes more obvious. Can you see that? Because you switch, you, your brain switches off. And you're not seeing mountains anymore. You're just seeing shapes. Which is really what I like to paint. Just shapes. All right. I try not to paint mountains. I try to, I try to paint <coughs> shapes. Now, the other thing with area perspective, it doesn't just affect the... Oh, I'll, I'll just say this first of all. This is what I call the shadow tone. And if you can imagine, that's what it looks like if the sunlight isn't hitting it. And even in the finished painting, there are areas where the sun isn't hitting, and you can see the shadow tone still there. And this is the thing I picked up off people like John Wilson, Warwick Fuller, Doug Seeley, Casey Seeley, these guys, they're all doing this. They're all great painters, very generous. The fact that they pass the information on, I would never have learnt to do this myself. You know, so, you know, I'm so grateful that they do give lessons. And um, so what's happening there is you've got this, the dark shapes, but more spe let's go back to the mountain. You can see that I've pa I painted the whole thing in just the blue, the, in the blue greys. And what I've done, I've painted it as if, let's just say it's a cloudy day, there's no sun, and uh, yes, I, I thought I had a photo. Oh, I might have a photo. I'd just like to show you the photo of it. I don't know if uh, the camera can pick it up. Here we go. Um, can you see that the sun, where there's shadow areas where the sun isn't shining? That's a cloud shadow there, cloud shadow there. And, but in the photo, the, it's not so obvious, is it? And this is why people say, oh, you can't paint from photos. You need to learn to paint from photos, in my opinion. Incidentally, I should say that everything I'm telling you is just my opinion. It's not right or wrong, but this is just my take on it. And, you know, uh, so... When you've done that, when you've painted the shadow tones, you actually come back and paint the sunlight. So you can see I've just started to put the sunlight. And the way I was taught to do it by these guys is you go dark to light. So the first things you're painting are these things here. Then the next thing you would paint is that one. It's the next darkest thing. The next darkest thing, that scrubbing the reflection down the bottom here. If that reflection wasn't there, if that wasn't water, I would just put a wash of yellow ochre or something similar to what I was seeing. If the grass was a yellowy colour, and then I'd paint over the top of that. Um, and then I'd block in the sky like I've done there. Just a very simple blocking, you know, shapes. 
keeping the, the spaces where the clouds are, if I can, nice and bright, clean. And, and, and as I go along, I start dropping in other bits and bobs, you know, till eventually, I've, I've not actually finished that, but you can see I've started to put some cloud shadow in there, you know, underneath, uh, sorry, you know, the shadowed areas of the clouds. Um, with, with respect to this sunlight on the mountains, that works the same way. As you come forward, so you, you, you start, when you're putting your darks in, you go dark to light. When you're doing, when you start putting the sunlight onto your painting, the highlights, you go light and you come dark. Okay, so get warmer as you come forward. You can see these trees are much warmer than there. Can you see what I mean by warm? You know, like, much more pigment there. I haven't, that one there, I've, I've got very blue green. You know what I mean? It's got, it's got very little yellow in it. It's got a little bit to make it green, but very little. Okay, now, what I thought I'd do is, that's basically the nuts and bolts of, of, of you know, a varial perspective. Um, what I thought I'd do, as I said earlier on, I like to see it done. So what I'm going to do, uh, are you happy to see it done? Yeah. Hope it works, hope it works. <laughs> but um, what I've done, I've, I've picked a very limited palette here. I've just put those colours out. I've got cobalt, ca uh, cobalt blue, cad red, um, cad yellow pale, yellow oxide, titanium white. And look, I've got two dobs here. I've got phthalo green and a bit of cat orange. I love cat orange. But um, I don't. I just love it. The, you know, it just gives the painting a bit of vibe. You can see I've used it. If you look on there, along the river's edge, I'll just pick it up. I've used it. Can you see I've just dropped little bits in here and there? If I, if you take them out, I've started to do it there in the distance. But it just brings a paint. For me, it brings a painting to life. All right. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to start by having a drink of water. And I'm going to, I've, I've got this very limited palette, and I'm going, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with my darkest darks, I'm going to create them with blue and red, about 50-50. All right? And what I'm going to do is mix them together, a little bit of water, and I'm going to paint in. So this is the picture I'm sort of trying to work on, I'm going to paint these close-up trees first. I'll use the photo. I've got one done on photo paper, but it got a bit too dark. So the closest things to me, this, look, if someone else did this, they might do it differently, but this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to block in these trees. I'll put my photo there. I'll just pick this up. Don't be afraid to ask questions if you, if you need to ask anything. Because you know I'm a mere male. We can only do one thing at a time. And... You should try and put that painting somewhere so you can see it. I'll just put that there. Can you sort of see that? That's what I'm trying to, to do. Can the camera see that? Is that alright? Mm -hmm. And straight away, after, after those two things there, again, I'm just painting shapes. That's, that's the way I like to see it. I'm just painting shapes. There we go. Got those two in. Straight away, I'm going to lighten that now. So I'll put a bit more paint out. Same mix, but this time I'm just going to put a little bit more white, a little bit more blue. And I don't get it right every time. I just have to come over here and check it. That could be a little bit light. I've got to make sure that I've got enough light to go a long way back, if you catch what I mean. I don't want to get too light too soon. Now, these trees going down to the distance there. The reflection in the water. But you know, theoretically, I should be able to do this whole painting in these, it's like a black and white photo. You know, so, and it should look good. 
So here we go. I'll just make that a little bit darker. I'm just going to rub in a little bit of a line there to sort of know where I'm going. A little bit of a tree, a couple of trees further back. Oh, should have gone a bit lighter on the lower. Gonna keep an eye on me. <laughs> I'll, I'll just go over those a bit. Can you see what I'm doing? Can you see how I'm making, even though I put it in, I'm still coming back and tweaking it a little bit. I mean, the number of times I'll paint something like this and forget to put the reflection in. There you go. So I've already got, can you see it's already sort of looking, it works doesn't it? Yeah. It's just a wonderful, you know when I first learnt to do it, I thought wow, I've got this gift, somebody's given me this <laughs> gift, that's how I felt. Yeah. I thought you couldn't buy it off me, you couldn't have paid me to take that information back, you know. Now, here's, here, here's the go, those trees there are probably about the same distance as that aren't they? You know what I mean? That's how I work it. I make my own decisions, I think, oh, look, that's about the same distance away. I'm just guessing, but I'd say it is. So it needs to be pretty much the same as that. And I'll put it on and I'll check it out. I've got to remember to, to, to drop it in down there as well. And I like, I like paintings that are a bit on the looser side, you know. Uh, soft edges, you know, the, I'll keep talking about um, painting, you know, I always think there are three or four things that we need to take into account here. You've got your drawing, if your drawing's no good, I'm a realist, so I, you can see that, um, it needs to look like what it is for me, especially when you're doing uh, portraiture or still life. So your drawing's really important. Tone. I reckon tone's number two for me, and number three is colour. Like I could paint this whole painting and not get the colour right, but as long as tonally it was okay, and the drawing's all right, it should be okay. Do you know what I mean? The other thing, like you've got other things like edges, you, know, you don't want too many hard edges. So everything needs to be blended, uh, not blended, soft, you know, keep the edges reasonably soft in your painting, I mean, when I paint at home, I'm painting like this, I, I have a mirror where that, up there, about 10 feet away, mm -hmm. I have another one maybe over there, and I'm always looking in the mirror. So I put my mirror with me today. But, um, and I do that to keep an eye on how I'm going. What, what I should also say to you is that not only does it matter that this mountain is a certain distance away, but if I stood there, and walked to there, I'm walking away. Do you get what I mean? Like these trees are in there, that's much closer. So I need to be aware that that is going to be, need to be a lighter and bluer also. So if you want to do a real good job, you should start at there. It should start to get a little bit lighter. And it should get a little bit lighter as we go in up here. And the more you do it, it's like they say, brush miles, you know. The more you do it, the better it's going to get. A little bit of water. I'm going to make sure I don't dip it in my drinking water. <laughs> Look, I'm probably not going to finish this today, but the idea was to show you... Um, how it works, and I'm sure that, you know, to see it, for me anyway, simple person that I am, I like to see it, and uh, hopefully it's going to work for you too. So here I go, look, I should show you what I'm doing, I'm just still mixing these two together, but I'm putting less and less red in there, oh, he says, as he drops a great lump in, I'll just try this, it's too dark. So here we go, a little bit more blue, 
just trying to get a little bit of water. I'm going back to this one now. I reckon that's not light enough. Same again, a bit of blue. It's a good idea to leave a little bit of what you've had, which I haven't done, but so don't do what I did, um, so that you can actually see it's progressively getting lighter and bluer. Here we go. into account that sometimes you know the darks are lighter and light you know I'm not doing that with this I am aware of that but um, do you know what for a painting this size I think I'll get away with it do you know what I mean yes. and I don't think I've got the time with this demo to actually uh, is that what you're talking about the fact that reflections are slightly yeah yeah the darks are lighter and the lights are darker for instance, if I had a white pole there, it would be a creamy colour in the water. But I'm not taking that into account. No. I'm just, I'm just painting it. I'm using the same. Does it look all right yeah, from back there? But can you see? It's, it's already happening, isn't it? So I've got linear perspective here, but I've also hopefully got uh, aerial perspective happening. And what I do then, I clean my brush and I like to just block in the sky and with my limited palette I'm just going to use blue and white and you, we know that the sky, I don't know if you know this or I'll, I'll assume you don't know it, you know when you go outside and you look at the sky with, it's the same thing aerial perspective, when you look straight up you've got this beautiful blue sky and as it comes down, of course, you're looking through a lot more moisture and particles, that sort of stuff. It gets lighter and a bit dirtier. So you might drop a little bit of yellow ochre in. But because, that, if, because I'm not looking to the horizon here, the horizon's there, I'm actually looking quite a, high in the sky. It would stay relatively clean, wouldn't it, if you catch what I mean? Yeah. Another thing I like, if I'm doing something like this, if I've got a, a mountain like that, I like to put... See how I've left a bit of that up there? Mm -hmm. I like that to accentuate that. I don't think... It's sort of like that on the photo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, um, one thing I used to do, I used to, used to copy the photo literally, you know. Never used to move anything, but this is Steve's world. <laughs> so I can move anything I want, if you get one. That was yeah. Again, you've done it on me for sound too. What's that again? You've done it on the me for sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. The same. <laughs> I better watch it. I better, I better not do it every time. But um, the other thing too, try and keep where, where your things join, like the mountain and the sky. That's trees up there. You look at a lot of people, but really hard edged. You know, if, you, if your edges are all too harsh. Um, it just won't look any good. Uh, where am I? Over here. Put a bit of this in. So I'll try and keep that a little bit darker at the top. A little bit more blue in that mix up there. Come across this side. Do you use any mediums at all? I do. I, I, I use the um, open medium. Uh, I thought I had it with me. But I'm not using it today, that one there. Okay? And I'll tell you where it's really good. It's really good if you're doing portraits. What you know, does it do? What it does, it stops the paint drying quickly. You know, it keeps the, that's the, the, the open medium. It means it keeps the paint open longer. So it's terrific. 
Oh, um, I did a demonstration here earlier on in the year. Everyone I spoke to um, was trying to get a hang of this, and I think at the time Matisse hadn't put it out, so they were all waiting for it. But give it a go, you won't believe it, it's just really good stuff. And uh, especially, like I say, if you're doing stuff where you want to do a lot of blending, but even with this, I'm not going to use it today, but even with this, it would come in really handy. And when you use oil, um, when you use oil, what are you using? When I use oil? Yep. Do you have any medium? Medium. Um, terps. Yeah, um, yeah not, not much. I, I sometimes use uh, um, yeah, mainly terps, and I make my own up, just a little bit of oil, you know. Mm -hmm. Gum turps. Yeah, gum turps. Okay, I've got to remember where I am with this. All right, so. I think we're getting that aerial perspective look, aren't we? Yeah. You know, that, that look of distance. And look, the thing I said before, if I, just down there, maybe I could just drop in a tiny bit of ochre. You know, the tiniest bit, oxide, yellow oxide. Can you see it's just, you know, don't, be, don't put too much in. But can you see it's just graded off a little bit? Well, hopefully when that dries, So there we go. I'll just leave the clouds for a few minutes because I really want to show you this other business about as we come forward now. See how that's working in there, the same thing. Out of all the things that when I learnt to do this, this was the hardest thing to put the greens on. Whenever, when when I, everyone in the class I was in made them much too warm, it's, it's so, you've got to get these distant ones really right. Um, so here we go. One way of doing it is, is to start with that colour there and lighten it. But what I do these days, I just, I just sort of start with a bit of blue like this. I put a very little bit of green into it, a yellow, sorry, to create a greeny colour. And just to show you, um, when I'm painting out, and you know, like, you can't see things as easily outside, I actually cheated. And I made myself this. And if you look at it, can you see that? And on there, I put a dot of the highlight colour, okay? And I have that in my French easel, which is at the back there. And I've even written on there what it is, what, what you know what's there, but if you if you're going to do this, don't be afraid to do this. You know, everything that helps you, do it. So here, here I go. Every painting doing this way. Every painting I I paint this way, yeah. This way is a little bit marked there. Oh no no! If I should just point out, that's just a guide. Don't forget, you could go out. And look at this on a different day, and it'll have a different look. Do you know what I mean? Like some days are beautiful blue days, aren't they? You could go out on a cloudy day, and I used to think, oh, clouds, no good. And one day I went painting down at uh, down the south coast there because I live at Campbelltown, and I just drove down to Thoreau, and it was a grey day, and we're standing there, one of my friends who I paint with. And you know what? I fell in love with grey days. They are the most beautiful thing. You've got no idea. The colours are just fantastic. So, you know, you, you, can't, you can't say, oh, that's the colour I'm going to use. That colour there. You can't say that. But it's a good guide, isn't it? It's, you know, it's roughly that. And you can manipulate it one way or the other. Because, you know, you're doing it with red and blue or... Burnt sienna and blue to get a really dark, dark. 
You know, sometimes these days I'll even use um, Payne's Grey if it's really dark, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of use that just to get things happening. But yeah, that's just a guide. It's not in concrete. Um, so, where was I? Oh yes, I'm going to do that. Um, so here we go. I'm going to put the sunlight on the back here. Once again. See that mountain there? It's got, see the sun on it? And I'll try and leave that cloud shadow, which I don't think I did there. Here we go. I'll try this first. I'll just see what it looks like. Look at my photo. That might be a little bit light, but I'm going to live with it for a second. And I'm scumbling and I'm trying to leave little bits of the blue showing through. Just like that. I don't know if you can, can you actually, can you see that guys? Can you see that, the, you know, the trees are creating little shadows themselves. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And and I'm using hot bristle brushes, okay? If you were using, if I was using a nylon brush here, everything would be hard edged, everything. So I, even though the water knocks them about a bit, I much prefer to use the hot bristle. I'm not saying I won't use a, a nylon brush, but certainly for landscape, and I'm gonna say right now, I think it's the hardest thing to paint a good landscape mm -hmm. from my point of view. I'm going to drop a tiny little bit of red into that. I don't want much, just a corner of the brush. You see how much I didn't put in? Mm -hmm. Can you see it's warming up a little bit as it's coming forward? This, uh, this, these colours. No, I'll mix it up. I'll use others. But you know, I found this to be a, a good. I can paint anything with them. With those two little bits of cheaty stuff there, you know. But you know, I do like it. I like to throw in another colour every now and then. You know, it's good to, you know. But uh, I've sort of got myself trained to. Um, to start off with those colours. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to step back and look at that myself. It started to look alright, isn't it? Okay, so. I am a bit strapped for time here, guys. But, you know, what I mean by that is I don't want to. Ooh, another second. If I was at home, I would obviously take a lot longer to do this, you know. But I think this is a good way to get the point over. Here we go. So what I'm going to do now, as we come forward, just as that was lighter and bluer, as it's further away, this is a bit darker, so will the green be a bit darker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix another little batch just a little bit darker than, than the one I had. Bit, uh, maybe a tad more yellow. A little bit of that red. I'm just going to try that. That is a bit darker. Can you see it from there? Yeah. Just a little bit. And it's really worth taking the time to get it right. You know, even as I was saying before, that as this goes away, it's going to be lighter and bluer as it goes away. It's the same with these mountain tops. The, the, the sunlit area, that needs to, as it comes forward, it gets a bit warmer. As it comes this way, for instance, if I was walking up there, I'm walking up a hill like that. Mm -hmm. So that would be further away than this. So do you always start the, the back there and move forward? Or? When I'm putting the, the highlights on, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when I'm Working this, when I put the darks on, I start at the foreground, yeah. and I work back. 
when I'm putting this on, I start back there and come this way. Do you know, um, I guess, you know, the longer you paint, you can break all the rules. You know, it's just, if you know what I mean, you don't need to um, stick so rigidly to things and I guess you get more skilled so you can, you can sort of, uh, as I say, break the rules. But it's best to sort of get yourself into a bit of a routine at first. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to come up here now. Here I go again. A bit more blue. A little bit more green. A little bit more red. I don't want it to get too dark. And if you look on here, the thing, one of the things I really like about it is that face is in shadow. The sun must be coming from here, see? And try and preserve your shadows. Look, I should have left a shadow there, but because I'm talking to everybody, it's my excuse. I've not left it, but I'll try and leave one there so you get to see it. Once again, I'm painting trees on the top of this on the top of this mountain. So I want to keep it soft. And as it comes, as it comes around to leave the dark face, maybe there'd be a few bits growing down like that. Can you see by keeping things soft, edgy soft, it looks more real, doesn't it? You know? Remember I said to you before that sometimes I forget to paint my shadow? Well, what I should have been doing is flicking a little bit of this into the river. I'm just going to make that a little bit warmer. I might even drop a bit of that in. Could be a bit too much. But let's try it. Put the hair there. And like I say, just drop a bit in down here, reflection. Isn't it amazing? Just shapes. It really is just shapes, isn't it? <coughs> I love it. There you go. And now I'm going to come to the trees. And I'm really going to change it quite a bit. I'm going to see if I can make a... Um, a bit of a... See, it's much warmer. I'll just try that. That might be too warm for back there, but it's probably pretty good for here. So I am cheating a bit. Uh, maybe back there. Put a bit more blue into that. Those trees there. That's the other thing. When I go to a workshop, I love to see a picture that's being painted at the same time. So I should have given you all a copy of that, shouldn't I? reflection in the water. Yes, this should be a slight, maybe a slightly, a bit lighter or something. Just put a bit more red into that. Just. And here's the other thing. You could look at that one and say, oh, these colours are a bit different. And they are. And I don't care. As long as it works. Do you get what I mean? I'm not a counterfeiter. I'm not trying to paint the same thing every time. In fact, I quite like painting something subtly differently. You know? <coughs> so I've got to be aware that the sun's coming from here. I want to try and leave a bit of shadow on this side of the trees. Yeah? Here we go. It's coming around that way a bit. I've got to try and remember, keep this a bit softer. I usually just drag it down like that. 
Well, you reckon is that all right? And while I've got that there, I'll come over here and do this fellow. Now, here's the thing, if you come and look at it close up, later on I'll have a look at it, but you'll see it's just scratches and dots and dashes, shapes, and hopefully back there it's looking a bit like it's supposed to look, you know? And Here we go. Bit of grass going along there. So I'll pick up and do this. Bit of yellow. Little bit of blue. In fact, hang on a second, I'm molting. I might even drop a little bit of fallow green in here. And I'm just going to have to stand in front of you for a second. These are like reeds and rushes growing along the edge of the river. And of course they'd have a reflection. So I'll drop the reflection in. Linear perspective. They're going to be going away. So they get smaller. And actually that should be getting a bit lighter and bluer, shouldn't it? So how about I just drop a bit of blue and white into that look? that's sitting there, and just put it on top. And you might say, oh, no one's going to notice that, but they will. I will anyway. So, and here, here we go, I'm going to use that magic little bit of orange I like. If you look at the, can you see the bit of orange in the water? Don't look at what it is. Just, oh, what is it? It's just little, little shapes. You know what I mean? Try not to look at what it is. Try to see it as a shape. You know? And then, this is a bit of artistic license now. I'd spend a lot more time on that at home, but you're getting the drift of what I'm doing there, aren't you? Mm -hmm. A bit of artistic license, a little bit of white, just sort of along the, the edge of where they, where they, you know, where the reeds grow, the gap between the. Just straight white. Well, I actually must admit, I, I think I, I, did, I did use the white, but I got a bit of orange on my brush. I didn't clean my brush. But do you know what? I very rarely use just white. I nearly always drop a bit of yellow or something into it. I don't, it looks too chalky. You know, it dries very chalky. Okay, so point in case. All right, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to clean my brush. And I'm going to take a big dog of white. I need to clean a spot. Hang on. Let's get rid of that. Even though the clouds are white, I never paint them like that. I always drop in just a corner. It's going to pick it up too much. That was the yellow oxide, right? That was the yellow oxide. Uh, no, this was um, the cad yellow pale. Cad yellow. Okay. That's that's my favourite yellow. But, you know, you could use lemon yellow, but this, this just seems to suit me. Can you see the difference between that and that? Look. So what I do, I block them in, just like I did the sky. Once again, keeping an eye on those soft edges on top of that mountain. I've invented that one, I think. Oh no, it was there. It was there. I'll show you what I do. When I've got, I'll just put in these main shapes. And look, 
I stuff it up sometimes, you know, like, um, I'll say, oh, I'm going to do this, make it this, that, the other, and stuff it up. But the beauty with the acrylics is, in 10 minutes it's dry, you can just come back and do it again. You know, it's fantastic, isn't it? So, there you go, I've got those basic shapes, but to make it look a bit more real, I'll sort of, like I've done over there, or even here, or on this one particularly, start dropping in a few... You know what I mean? Mm. These little bits. And I'm probably overdoing it. But you know, you can always come back and cover them up again. And then pick up a tiny little bit of, of the cobalt on the corner of my brush. See, I'm sneaking up on these colours. Be careful. Don't, don't go, poof, poof, you know, just sneak up. You can do it ten times. But if you stuff it up, it's gone. And then underneath, you can just drop in a little bit of... we go for time. Are you okay? Fantastic. All right. Um, what I'm going to do in this painting, have we got a little bit more time? In the water there, can you see it's wind blown? So little things like that, I'll just pick up a bit of blue. down here where that dip is. When you're doing that wind line, your brush almost dry? Yep, almost dry. In fact, if it wasn't, I'd just dry it off on the tail to do that. Because I want that look. Yeah. You know, I don't want it to be a solid... Just soften this up a bit. That would have been a good place to use the open medium. Just down here where I wanted to blend it. And then I'm going to just... I noticed on this that it's very blue across there. And I've made a bit more of that than there is. See, that's what you can do. You don't have to stick to this. I'm just going to put a little bit of white into that. With the yellow again. And just put a bit of white over there. couple more things. Uh, uh, oh yes, a little brush. On the photo, there are a couple of stones in the water here, see them? Opportunity to look, put a bit of interest in there. So, maybe orange, what do you reckon? A bit of orange and white. And we'll just drop in a couple of stones here and there. Oh, I've got that on there, I'll just put a bit more up there. Don't want to overdo it. You can see that, you know, you could just, this is where I'd be looking in my mirror to make sure I don't overdo it. Maybe put a couple close together. You know, and I'll come back over here. Just put a little bit of, even though there's nothing on the actual photo, just put a little bit of a hint there of some light paint. And on the photo, there's sort of some erosion happening on that hill. 
So I'm just going to get a little bit of orange, cat orange and white again. And I'm just going to see if I can very gently hint that might be a little bit too light, maybe not, and a bit of erosion. Soften it up. You know, like the rain works its way down and leaves paths, you know. And oh, one other thing I want to show you. It's probably a little bit busy. But that, that, that mountain there, yeah. you, in, at the time of day, we, there's no highlights. It'd probably be little bits of sandstone and I love dropping them in. So mm -hmm. even though it's not there, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to say the sun, oh look, the sun's just catching those bits there. And I'm, again, I'm just using the orange and the white. Soften the edges a bit. I'm probably overdoing that because I can't see in my mirror. But that doesn't matter. Again, I, I dry the brush off a bit too. Don't want it too wet. You want to sort of be able to stipple it and get nice soft bits. Even maybe have a bit of that happening over here. Um, I, think, I think I've covered about everything there. I know that's not a finished painting. But that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of what I would do, okay? And I'm just going to stand back and have a look myself. Give me a second. Yeah. It's just some paper you've done that. It's on paper, yeah. It's um, just um, for oil and acrylic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's good, good stuff to paint on. And especially if you, like if you want to keep these things for, like all those portraits I've got over there, I've done them on paper, and I can have 50, and it's only that thick. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, I might just, I'm going to deviate from this for a second. I'll grab that, and I'll just show you. Like, this is, this is my eldest daughter, and she's a singer. That, uh, these are, that, these are hang on, I'll just put that down. Did you see for you, or did you do a photo? Sorry? Photo? From a photo, yeah. That's her again. But you can see, can you see, I've just drawn it in with charcoal? Yes. And then just painted. But I wanted you to see the difference in the skin tone there. Mm -hmm. Look, you see that one? A bit chalky, that one. Mm -hmm. But I'll keep it. And this is my other daughter. That's an oil. That's my wife. Um, that's my mum. <laughs> um, I think that's about all you need to see. But I just wanted to, you know, show you the things, other things. I, oh, this is what I did from life. Um, I get on Fridays. I go to a life painting thing. And I painted that one, but I'm quite happy with that. It's, it's got that nice, loose look, hasn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, so there's no coating on the paper, it's just straight... Straight paper, yeah. I copied John Singer Sargent. Have oh, you seen that one? Uh, Lady Agnew? So there you go. They're the things, if you want to sort of, um, you know... I won't show you that one. Oh, look at this one. I've got to show you this one. That's me. Oh! <laughs> when I was 25. <laughs> No, you're a goth student. There you go. <laughs> but there you go. One colour. One colour. Okay, so you can paint any painting. You, just terra rosa, that is. Uh, terra rosa and white. And that's my other daughter again. And that's about it. Well, look, guys. Have you got any questions? Like, any questions on this? <laughs> No, they, some of those were oil, to be honest. 50-50. Um, if you were painting outside, what would the drying time be? What would the difference in the drying time be? It, 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 yes, it can, but you know what? 
that will make the difference. So I take that outside when I'm painting acrylics, and it makes all the difference. So, the, you know, the open medium, it's medium 31. Is that a gel or a liquid? No, it's like a paste. It's actually like, almost like yogurt. Yeah? Look, there's, um, I use it my own way, uh, and the way I use it, I just pick it up like paint. So I, uh, you know, I think you can use up to 50-50. Exactly right. Up to 50-50. And what I do, I, I just put a bit out like I've done there. Yes. I put another dob, and when I want to keep it open, I just pick it in, and I, I can guess it. I don't use it 50-50, I probably use 20%. If you go, the more you use, it makes your paint go a bit transparent. And you'll see it happening, but it's great stuff. Especially, like I say, portraiture and that sort of thing. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Steve. Well, one second. One second. I noticed you used one brush, was it? Yeah, just one brush. I actually used two. Oh, two. Yes, two. You're normally a one brush person? Not always, yeah. but a lot of the time, yeah. I don't know why. I'm pleased to hear that, because I am too. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. What's the name of the orange you're using? Uh, I'm using... Cat orange. Cat orange. Uh, it's... Uh, structure. This should be... A, it's structure, but I was looking for a number. But it's just cat orange. Yeah, I like the structure, for my, for my taste, because it's like oil. So. Oh yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm, I, look, I'm using cobalt blue. Better just check this one. I'm using cad red medium. I'm using cad yellow medium. And yellow oxide. Titanium white. And then I've used, I, I've used a tiny bit of that, didn't I? Thallo green. I love, I love these two, the thallo green and the, the cat orange. Look, I'll be honest with you, in this painting here, I've used thallo blue in the sky. I just, I looked at this photo and it was a, almost, it almost looks white on the photo, doesn't it? But I didn't want to paint it white, but I didn't want to paint it that blue either. So I thought, I'll try something else. I've, I've not done that before, but I quite like it. I don't know, do you, what do you reckon? Do you think it works? So, you know, um, but that's the palette I've used. Um, what does thallow mean? Thallow, what is that? It's the pigment, type of pigment. On the Three Sisters one, is it also the cat orange? It is the cat orange, yeah, on the on the mountain. And I don't know if you can see. Can you see there? This, mm. do you see that? That's this is that business about shadow and sunlit. Mm. Look at the sunlit cliff there. Mm. And look, if I hadn't put that in and left it just plain blue, it probably wouldn't be as interesting, would it? Mm. Not for me anyway. It's very subtle, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, cat orange. Um, you can you can use. Lemon yellow and um, and, a, and a, a cool red like an alizarin to make a colour that works as well. But look, I, I found the cat orange really works. Someone else? Um, I was just thinking about the uh, drying times. Um, I found that using flow sometimes slows the drying down a little. I paint a lot up in the back of the hill. Right. And I found that the flow was just a little more okay. slower to dry than structure. So that's no, it's a good point. I also use the um, open medium a lot when I'm painting up in the open building. Yeah. Try and calm down. No. If that helps some of the others. Oh, well, there you go. So there you go. Um, the the open the the flow stays open a bit longer. Yeah. I haven't used it. So someone else said something there. Yeah. Uh, the dark one, I might want, and then the blue, and then the yellow ochre is different. Uh, maybe fifty, fifty. On this one here? Yeah, the um, lighter and the darker. And oh, you mean, you mean yeah. that and this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, look, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember how I mixed that. <laughs> I, I can't remember what I did. You know, look, when I'm painting, when I've just shown you this, when I'm at home, I don't even think 
about mixing paints. I just do it. Yeah. So I have another job when I'm telling people how to do it, you know. But, um, well, thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Thank you, David. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Okay.